Google Gemini just launched three brand new features that are going to allow you to automate any tasks that you want and be able to schedule them out. They also launch a brand new AI agent that you could deploy straight from your terminal and a few other features that I'm going to share with you towards the end of this video. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to access all these features and some crazy use cases you can use each of them for. Now, the first new feature that Gemini has is you can now actually schedule out tasks with Gemini. If you come into settings over here in the bottom left hand corner from the web app, you are now going to see scheduled actions. And if you click on this, you'll be able to see all of the different scheduled actions that you have gone ahead and actually created. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, please create me a scheduled action. And then I'm going to put this to send me daily update of my calendar to do's and important unread emails at 8 a.m. And all we have to do is ask Gemini to do this and it's going to go through and it is actually going to do that. So it's determined that it could use the scheduler.schedule tool in order to create a scheduled action here. And as we could see, this now went ahead and actually created this. So this right here is where we could pause it or we can edit it. So we could come into edit right here. We could see what the name is and we could see exactly what the instructions are and then we could see when it's actually going to run. We could change this to be daily, weekly, monthly, and we could set it at 15 minute increments. And if we ever wanted to actually see this again, all we're going to do is come over into settings, come into scheduled actions, and it will actually begin to appear here. Now remember, you need to make sure that you put the prompt that I put here where it says, please create me a scheduled action. On top of that, what I would strongly recommend that you do is I would recommend that you go through and plan these out based on all the different apps that Gemini actually has access to. So if we come in to apps right here, we're going to see that we could give Gemini access to GitHub. We could give it access to Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Keep, Google Tasks. If we come down here, Google Flights, Google Hotels, Google Maps, and then YouTube, YouTube Music, and OpenStack. So what I would recommend if you really want to take advantage of full power Gemini is that you build out these scheduled actions with these things in mind. For example, getting it to update you on your competitors' latest videos on YouTube, or sending you a summary of things that you could do to improve your YouTube content. Or maybe you're looking for flights or hotels for a trip that you want to go on this summer. Well, guess what? You don't actually have to manually go and do that anymore more like I'm sure a lot of you are if you're looking for anything you could just have this actually do it or let's say you need directions on how to actually get somewhere have Google Maps link to your Google Calendar for your meetings and it can actually tell you what you can do regarding that or like I just shared with you I think this is great in order to actually get an update every morning about exactly what you have going on and here's what it actually looks like when it does that. Okay, so here's what that mockup would actually look like. We could see here, it's going to say subject, my daily summary, it's going to give me my calendar, it's going to give me my to-do list, and it's also going to give me important unread emails. Now, this is just a template. The actual output would be populated with things from my account, but again, I wanted to actually build this out to show this off to you. Because anything that you could currently do in Gemini, more likely than not, you could get a scheduled action to do. Now, the next thing that you could do now is you could actually create photos for free with Google now using their Imagen 4 in AI Studio. But before I show you how to use this, I want to make sure that you smash that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest changes in AI because I put videos like this every single day and you're not going to want to miss them. Now, like I was alluding to earlier, a new thing that you could do if you come to AIstudio.google.com, and by the way, this is 100% free, you can come over here into Generate Media, and if you click on Imagen, you'll see that this now uses Imagen 4 Preview and Imagen 4 Ultra Preview. In the past, this only had Imagen 3, but now it has these two. So let's click on this right here, and we can ask it to generate us some type of image. For example, please generate a hyper realistic image of a beautiful modern home in Montana. Now, what I actually want to show off with this, we're going to use this right here. I'm also going to open up a ChatGPT window because I want to show off the speed of this. So if we ask ChatGPT to do this, then we ask Imogen to do this. What you're going to notice is that Imogen does this 
way faster. In fact, we're using the ImageN4 Ultra Preview model. This still does it way faster than ChatGPT. ChatGPT hasn't even started actually creating the image yet. We can see that it just started now and ImageN is already done. We could have gotten this to do several things and we could do a bunch of things with this. We could tell it it's a good response. We could tell it it's a bad response. We could expand the view here, we could download this, we could copy it, we could export it straight to our drive, or we could actually change the aspect ratio over here. And with this model right here, we can only generate one image, and with ImageN4, we can only generate one image, but if you stoop down to ImageN3, which quite frankly, I wouldn't recommend doing because ImageN4 is just so much better, you can make four different variations. Now, if we come over to ChatGPT, again, this still isn't even done getting started. Now the next new Google feature that I wanted to highlight is going to be Gemini CLI. It's a light powered and powerful open source AI agent that brings Gemini directly into your terminal. What does this mean? Well, if we come over here and click this link, and by the way, I'm actually going to put the link to this in the description of this video, you will see exactly how you can access this. Now I know, if you don't know anything about coding and you're not technical at all, this is going to look really confusing. But if you come down here, it actually gives you a readme right here where you can actually see exactly how to get started with this. So it gives you a quick start through this. It gives you how to actually use it for advanced use or increase limits. And it gives you different examples of what you can actually get this to do. For example, write me a Gemini Discord bot that answers questions using an FAQ that I will provide. Or you could get it to clone an existing project in GitHub, and then give you a summary of all the changes that went in yesterday. In addition to that, they have more popular tests down here, and they kind of break it out based on different use cases. For example, explore a new code base, work with existing code, automate your workflows, interact with your system, and so much more. And something else that I would strongly suggest that you do is I would pull up a Gemini window. I'm going to come into my main Gemini account right here, and I'm going to say, I want to come up with more ideas or what Gemini CLI can do. I am going to provide you with examples. Please expand on this list with a bunch of other use cases based on its capabilities. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, back over to GitHub, I'm gonna take these popular tasks and I'm gonna copy all of this. And what this is gonna do is allow Gemini to expand on what Gemini CLI can do. And if you're not doing things like this with Gemini, you're making a massive mistake because what you need to stop doing is just taking things at face value and instead get LOMs, for example, Gemini, ChatGPT, Grok, Claude to expand on a bunch of other things. So if we come down here, you'll be able to see a bunch of other things like generate comprehensive documentation, performance and security audits, dependency analysis and modernization. If we come down here, we'll see how we can actually streamline development workflows with this, or we could see a bunch of other stuff regarding all of the other different use cases. And we could say, what if I am a marketing manager? And what this is going to do is actually come up with scenarios and come up with ideas specific to whatever use case you actually have. So whether you're pitching somebody on why they should be using this tool, or you want to learn how to use this tool yourself, or just coming up with examples and ideas, I would leverage LLMs in order to actually do that. And if you want a fast response, I would recommend using 2.5 Flash because 2.5 Pro is honestly a little bit too much thinking and a little bit here. So we could see that we could actually do competitor analysis, instant SEO and content strategy, audience persona development, and so much more using Gemini CLI once we actually get this started. Now, if you want me to make a video about how to actually get started with this and how to actually access it straight from your terminal, please let me know in the comment section below. One other thing I should have mentioned earlier, I kind of glossed over this. With Gemini CLI, it actually gives you what it could do. So it can query and edit large code bases in and beyond Gemini's 1 million token context window. It can generate new apps from PDFs or sketches using Gemini's multimodal capabilities. It can automate operational tasks like query pulling requests or complex rebases. You can use tools and MCP service to connect new capabilities. For example, media generation with Imogen or V or if you're making music with Lyra, then you can also ground your queries with Google search tool 
built into Gemini. Now that last and final update that I have for you again, if you're in AI Studio right here and we come over to the models that Google currently has available, you're gonna notice if you come under Gemma, they have two brand new models. First one is going to be Gemma 3N E2B and then Gemma 3N E4B. Now. These are typically models that you would host on your local computer because they are open source models. But if you wanted to test something really quickly or you wanted to experiment with something really quickly, you could do that in AI Studio itself because you can now access these models from here. Now, if you don't know what that means and what I said just means nothing to you, don't worry, you're not alone. It probably for 99% of people won't mean anything. Instead, I would just continue to use Gemini 2.5 Pro, Gemini 2.5 Flash, and then Gemini 2.5 Flash Light Preview from June 17th right here. I would skip this one, that's the April 17th model because it just hasn't been updated, and this one has. Not sure if you've seen the reports yet, but Goldman Sachs just came out and said that they think in the next 12 months, AI is gonna replace over 300 million jobs. So my question for you is, are are you going to be one of those people that's replacing those jobs or are you going to be one of the people that gets replaced because you didn't embrace AI? And that's exactly why I created AI Automation School that you could check out at the pinned comment below. In fact, I have special launch pricing right now. So if you want to stay ahead of what's happening in AI and you want to learn how to automate your work with AI, how to make more money with AI, how to build AI agents without knowing how to code, or you just want me to audit your personal AI workflow so we could speed things up for you, I strongly suggest that you check now, if you like this video, I'd strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through seven hidden ChatGPT features that I guarantee you didn't know existed. I'll see you over there.